Hi everybody, welcome to another makeover. This dresser is a Goodwill file and it was made by Kroll Manufacturing Company. And the design of this dresser is kind of interesting. The drawers and the sides of the dresser are solid wood, solid poplar, but they made looking like bamboo. It looks like bamboo to me. And the dresser is in pretty rough shape. The top drawers are broken in the middle. I don't know what actually caused this break, but it's kind of weird. And I can tell that the dresser has been refinished once before me. I discovered some beige and brownish paint here and there, but the most interesting part is the top. It's a particle board with heavy plastic laminate. I started working with two top drawers, because they needed my attention, obviously. I removed the hardware first and then I kind of squeezed the wood glue inside of the crack. I didn't know if it was going to work because the crack was kind of like in a weird place. But I decided to try anyways and if it wouldn't work. This dresser would be the first candidate for an idea I've been wanting to try for a while. So I squeezed the wood glue into the cracks on the both sides and I clamped them and I let them dry. While the drawers were drying, I gave the dresser a good clean. I wanted to take off the base, but while I was cleaning, I found out that the base was actually the part of the dresser and it was glued together and was nice and solid, so I decided to leave it as it and sanded it without disassembling. For the areas the orbital sander couldn't reach, I used my Milwaukee multi-tool. And of course some hand sanding. I was going to paint the body of the dresser, no matter which idea I would go for, so I scap sanded it. I used 180 grit for the sides and for the thick plastic laminated top, I used 120 grit sandpaper to get rid of the sheen and to give my paint something to grip onto. And I can tell you right now that it was quite challenging even with 120 grit sandpaper, because it was really thick plastic, high quality plastic. And if it was a little bit lighter and if it had the different shade of brown tone, I would even try to restore the plastic. Yes, it is possible. After three hours of gluing, I decided to check my top drawers. And they turned out like those breaks and cracks never happened. That means I stick with my first idea for this dresser. And that's so funny, like I have so many ideas in my head, like a lot. And sometimes I can't find the right piece of furniture. Or even if I have found, I have so many other pieces of furniture in my stash. Like those high-end mid-century modern pieces I enjoy restoring big time. And usually between buying another piece of furniture or working with something I have on hand, I choose the second one and maybe it's not a right decision. And I postpone and sometimes the next thing I see, someone else realizes the idea I came up with. That's funny. And there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes I just wanted to be like, oh, I'm the first one who came up with this idea. Anyways, let's come back to the dresser. I wanted to keep the texture of the drawers, but it was impossible to send in all those grooves. My actual idea was to paint in those grooves with the same paint I was going to use for the body of the dresser. But I wasn't sure at that time because I wanted to have a wooden paint combination and I didn't know if it would be too much paint. I decided to sand those protruding parts and leave the grooves with the old finish. I wanted to change the hardware for this piece so I filled up those holes with some wood filler. And one of the top drawers was damaged at the corner so I used some wood filler as well to recreate the corner. Once everything dried, I sanded the drawers with my orbital sander and 180 grit sandpaper. For better adhesion and to prevent the bleed through situation, I primed the body of the dresser with the Kills Heavy Duty Primer. I used my brush for the sides of the dresser and the roller for the top. And with this dresser, I decided to test the different types of the paint rollers. The first one is a microfiber roller, is a, one of the most expensive. I started using it with the primer and even with the primer, I wasn't happy with the result. It kind of created the texture with the primer. And same happened with the paint. And because the top was laminated, I applied two coats of the primer. Once my primer dried, I sanded it with 220 grit sandpaper. And here's another thing for testing. This is a new brand for me, new paint brand. It's a, our local hardware store brand, Beauty Tone. This is 100% acrylic furniture paint. 
The color I picked is called Lucky Day and it's a greenish like sage color. And this is the first roller I tested. It's a microfiber roller. I picked it from Home Depot and they were out of the microfiber rollers I usually use. So I picked the most expensive one and I don't like how it works with this paint. It creates kind of like pattern like uh, an even surface of the paint. It's hard to see on a video probably, but it is there. I painted the drawers pools as well because I wanted to divide the wooden parts of the drawers with some painted parts. I didn't like this yellowish shade of the wood, so I decided to give the drawers a paint wash. But I wanted to do it only for the two drawers, for the two top drawers, so I would be able to have a look at them and decide what to do next. I had leftovers of the paint wash from my previous project, but if you ever want to do a paint wash, you just uh, mix paint and water in one to one ratio. I usually do one to one, but it all depends on the paint and the effect you want to achieve. If you need a thicker layer of white wash, you just add more paint. And if you need thinner, add more water. And then you apply your white wash and wipe it off without letting it dry. While my white wash was drying, I put the drawers back in the dresser. And I looked at them and I didn't like it. If I paint the body of the dresser with a darker color, maybe it would work, but with this light color, it doesn't. So I knew that once my white was dried, I was going to be painting the drawers with the same color as the body of the dresser. Meanwhile, I sanded the body of the dresser with 320 grit sandpaper to prepare it for the next coat of paint. And I thought that maybe if I would apply the second coat of my paint with the same microfiber roller, it would work better. But I was wrong and the second coat applied the same way as the first one and this roller created a little bit of texture on the surface. It wasn't a nice and smooth application. It was kind of like textured. There's no other word for that. So here I switched for the nail on the roller. And I taped it first to get rid of those little nail and fibers, but they still appeared in my paint. It doesn't mean that all nail and rollers do that, but this particular one did it. And fun fact, I have two spray guns for the paint. But right now I work in a basement and it takes too much time. I have to prepare the area for the paint, then to assemble the gun, then to paint. And the last step, which I hate, is to clean the gun. Maybe I will be using my paint guns more in the future when we build the workshop for me. But right now it's just faster for me to paint with the roller and the paintbrush. That's why I started this paint roller testing. Because I'm still looking for the perfect paint roller. While my second coat was drying, I painted the drawers. The plan was to paint the drawers, then let them dry. And then to do exactly the same thing I did at the first place. To sand those protruding, if it's correct word to say, protruding parts. And let the paint stay in the grooves. And there we go. I put back the sanded drawers and the painted drawers. And I realized that I like painted drawers better. And that is how my plan has completely changed. Instead of having wood and paint combination, I ended up painting the whole dresser. The only wooden part I left was the base and the legs. Once my second coat of the paint dried, I found out that there were much more fibers, nail and fibers in the paint that I saw when the paint was still wet. I needed a third coat of the paint. I sanded those fibers with 220 grit sandpaper as much as I could. And then I used my second favorite method of applying the paint. It's a brush and foam roller application. My first favorite is applying with a short fiber microfiber roller, but like I said, my local Home Depot was out of them. But paint brush and foam roller combination is easy too. You just apply the paint first with a brush and then smooth it out with the foam roller. The reason why I don't like to use the foam roller itself is because the foam soaks so much paint and sometimes it creates some bubbles. 
I usually don't have lots of bubbles and they pop itself, but if I have, I use one trick for them. I wait for about a minute or so, it all depends on the paint. And then I roll the roller very gentle without applying any pressure and it pops the bubbles and smooth the surface. Those metal blanks needed to be painted gold and I taped the holder because I know how sneaky gold paint could be. I use a beauty tone gold paint and I'm in love with this gold color. It's not yellow gold, it's kind of like rose gold. And this is the hardware I picked for the dresser. It's simple, but I like it. And I painted it the same gold color. I decided to stain the base in the color Early American, but it actually wasn't a good idea. I let it dry for one hour and then I applied my white wax. The last step to add a new hardware and we're almost ready to see the final result. Let me remind you how this dresser looked before and this is how it looks now. 